In this video, we're actually trolling uh, in my twin trawler at Thames Ford Lake and we're fishing for hybrids and stripers. The boat's moving at a consistent two and a half miles an hour. The rods we're using are actually Okuma eight and a half foot medium heavy rods. They're marketed as salmon rods and they're two piece. They have great grips. They, they've got a lot of backbone. They're just a great rod for this. Okay, on those rods we have Okuma reels mounted and they're level wide. And on those reels we have an 80 pound braid. And it's Power Pro Depth Hunter and that helps us control depth without having to have line counter reels. So it's a great setup. The lures we're trolling are actually called umbrella rigs. And an umbrella rig is actually a mechanism that looks like uh, a school of fish. And in Tennessee, uh, you, can, you can only have three hooks. So there's actually nine connection points on one of these frames. Frames are 20 inches wide, but only three can have jigs on them and the others are teasers. So that's what we're doing. Now, those things cost about $40. Now, the ones we're using here are striper memories, ones that I built personally, but you can buy these from different sources. Uh, to use. So the first thing is, is is to acquire those and you can buy the complete system. So I said they're about $40. And, and the key is how deep they're running. And once again, you control that by how much weight's on it, what diameter your line is, and what speed the boat's going. And uh, stripers, they will come up to hit, they will not go down to, to get a bait. They, when they feed, they're looking up. Now, the reason I use 80 pound line is normally overkill until you get hung in a tree. Now, when they flooded the lake, they left a lot of trees, and they're down deep, but if you happen to stop that boat or a fish stops you, when that umbrella rig goes down, it can hang in a tree really easy, so it's, it's a bad day when that happens. One thing I wanted to confirm on this actual trip was to kind of settle on the seating arrangement. Now, here, here are your options. When you get a fish on as, as big as they are, it's really difficult to fight them facing forward. You, you can't get leverage on them. So you're better off setting up a little bit in the middle part of the boat and then looking back, okay? In fact, in one of the videos, everything I did was looking back, but then you gotta turn around and make sure you know where you're going. Now, there's not a problem running into something in 10 sport because it's really deep. You could, you could run into another boat, but that's not likely either. But you get tired of turning around. In fact, one of the setups I had the depth finder on the back. Uh, then the opposite setup would be uh, facing forward. And, and I think that's the most comfortable all day is to sit on the back, face forward, have your depth finder on the front. Now I'm, I'm using Ray Marine stuff, so my main depth finder is, is a Ray Marine and it's, uh, it's that new Element 9 HV series. It's got all the fancy stuff on it. And the nine inch screen's nice because you can see it easily from the back seat. So. That's a nice setup. So what I was trying to figure out, well, what if I could drive the boat fo looking forward and when I get a fish on, swing over and get in the second uh, twin troller seat. And it really's worked out pretty good. It's a very comfortable way to fish because once you get a fish on, you need to be able to get some leverage on it because sometimes you get more than one fish on. So that's what we're trying to accomplish. Here's a good example of me in action. All right, I'm facing forward, I'm driving the boat, and all of a sudden there's one hits. And you see they hit pretty hard. Now there's fish 30 pounds in here, so it's not unusual to catch a 20 pounder or so. You just have to be ready. And it's hard to tell, but the boat's actually getting pulled sideways a little bit. But now you see I've switched over, I've sat on that front seat, and I'm facing back, so I'm in a great position to actually fight the fish. And you still have to kind of keep an eye on what, where the boat's headed. Normally what I do is head towards the middle to deep water, then I don't have to worry about it. And a lot of times where you're fighting one fish, you get one on the other rod. So that really gets interesting when both, both poles have uh, fish on them. I've been a serious striper fisher for about 30 years. In fact, I've got a center console Triton, a striper boat, and I ran Striper Memories Guide Service on the lake for several years. And before the twin trawler, I had a, a really good quality fishing kayak with a trawler motor on it. 
Now I can only fish with one rod because you, I couldn't control it once I got a fish on there, so you, it's a good chance you lose an expensive rod. But what I found was I could get the darn fish on, but I could never get them landed. I'd fight them and fight them, and for some reason they get off before I got them in the boat. So it wasn't, it wasn't very successful. What I've noticed about the twin trawler is I'm able to get them landed. As you can see on the videos, it, the darn thing does pretty well.